Um, you know, it's kind of hard to classify what Grixis Shadow is as a deck. Because um, it can fill so many roles, right? It can be hyper aggressive. Yeah. It can put it can put out like a Death Shadow on turn one, or a, a turn two Tassiger, or it can play the Control Rune route, or it can like play the value game. It's just it's so many things. But strangely enough, no Grixis sh does Shadow in this top eight. Not a one. Um, on our backup camera, we're gonna end up having a uh, Blue Eye Control and uh, versus Jeskai Queller. Yeah, that's gonna be Sam Richardson versus Steve Mullahu, both players we saw yesterday. Sam went uh, seven zero and one into the top eight, so he's currently crushing the tournament. Lost list. Didn't even want to go uh, double draw, and he was just like, "Nope, I'm just gonna win one of these matches." Yeah, it's fine. Exactly. Yeah, seating. <laughs> go for seating. As much as seating matters with Blue Eye Control, I'm not sure it does, but a little bit. Uh, I think you, the play. Can matter, can matter a lot in modern, yeah. depending on the matchup. Maybe not versus this Jeskai Queller deck, but when he gets yeah. matched up against like Sahili Rai or this Death Shadow Zoo on the other side of the bracket, mm -hmm. I absolutely. actually feel, feel like the draw is actually where you want to be in that matchup. Strangely, strangely enough, versus Jeskai Queller. Or? Yeah, in the in this in this kind of a grindy control matchup, like Jeskai Queller isn't going to be putting pressure on you, right? Uh, not really. Turn three Vendillions about as good as they can do. Yeah, and and Blue Eye Control, they're not going to put pressure on you either. They they can't just slam their Gideon on turn three and and hope for the best. Probably not think. in that matchup. No. Yeah, so. You, I think the rock art advantage actually matters more in that matchup. Okay. Strangely enough. Fair enough. Uh, on the other side of the bracket, we have Death Shadow Zoo versus Blue Eye Control. Uh, I think we saw both these players last yesterday too. We did the three seed, the Death Shadow player, uh, Tom Smiley. He had to win his last match. He had to go seven one. He was went six one into the ultimate round. Could not draw in, so he had to win. Mm. Um, and we saw him beat uh, your boy. Beat beat my boy Matt Tupper. Yep. Uh, but he's playing against the other blue-white control player, Keenan Kelly. We didn't see Keenan on cam at all. Keenan uh, top aid a, uh, a Titanium Plus last time, mm. but didn't win. Top aid this one, so I think he's two for two on that. Pretty cool. He's playing blue-white control as well. So that's two blue-whites on the opposite sides of the bracket. That is so they a lot of blue could meet in the finals. Uh, and then so. our final top eight match is going to be Ben Riley, local, local hero on Cheerios uh, versus Valakut Titan. And I, I got a chance to uh, stop by with uh, with Ben and his opponent uh, earlier. Both know each other. Um, and uh, the opinion of both Ben and his opponent is, oh no, it's not it's not good for Valakut Titan. Yeah, I mean, how could it be, right? <laughs> Apparently, there are no lightning bolts in the Valakut Titans list. Not, None at all. not at all, huh? So basically, SRAM and Pure Steel can't be interacted with um, at instant speed, I have to imagine, unless Ben's deck implodes, which happens, right? When, yeah. Whenever you're playing a turn two combo deck like Ben is, it, it comes at a cost, right? You don't have those, the backup plans. He could mull the five, mull the four, mull the three, mm. searching for the SRAM, not find it. Uh, it happens more often than you might think, mm. at least once a match, I'd say. Um, so yeah, that's the other side of the bracket. So we have the, the winner of Cheerios Valakut versus the winner of Blue White Control Death Shadow Zoo. Uh, the first side of the bracket, Blue Eight Control versus Jeskai Queller. And the match we're going to see, Sahili Rai combo versus Grixis Delver. I'm very excited about this match because yeah. I honestly have no idea how it's going to go. It could go either way, really. Like, like both decks have uh, a wealth of removal. Sure. And, yep. um, like, excellent game plans. Um, I don't think either is really favored here. Yeah, it probably think, comes I down to how they play their cards. Yeah, this is going to be very. Um, this is going to be a very skill-based matchup. It's going to be who who is able to apply pressure better. Uh, I think Lingering Souls is going to come in. Uh, oh yeah. At the oh, most yeah. post board, and it's going to be a house. <laughs> As it usually is, uh, basically against anything but pure combo, Lingering Souls is pretty good. And mm -hmm. against a deck that's playing three twos, three two flyers, it's damn good. Young Pyromancer. Oh yeah. Pretty good against Young Pyromancer. Um, now this Jeska, rather this uh, Jeskai Sahili Rai deck, is splashing black for Lingering Souls, Kolugan's Command, splashing Fatal Push even. Mm. So it says the removal in blue, white, and red isn't enough. He needs to play Fatal Push as well. Kind of crazy. Fatal, it, it it makes a lot of sense. So Fatal Push, it's a card that's really changed the complexion of modern since sure. it it was printed. It's the most impactful card in modern in years. Um, since probably, I would say, the most impactful card since Deathrite Shaman. Sure, yeah. Um, it's just, it has offered Black the ability to not play red if they don't need it, and just play this hyper-efficient removal spell that kills 
ninety percent of the creatures in modern. Yeah, I mean, like what does it not kill? It doesn't kill uh, Thrag Tusk, Bane Slayer Angel, Worm Coil Engine. <laughs> yep. Um, Primeval Titan. El, uh, reality Smasher. Yeah, certain Eldrazi. Yeah, sure, a Reality Smasher or or uh, Drowner Folk. That's a very short list. Yeah, the fact that we the, have the rest of the list is yeah. literally every creature in modern. Uh, it doesn't kill Tassiger or Gurmog Angler, which yes. is one of the reasons that you saw Tassiger Gurmog Angler decks really start permeating uh, post release of uh, of Aether Revolt. Is you saw a ton of Tassigers on the on the on boards because Tassiger doesn't die to Bolt, doesn't die to Push. The yeah. only thing. It only buys to path or terminate. It's so true. then the meta shifted around again, and then we get path decks in the form of blue-white control. Now, I mean, you can... These are one-mana removal spells, right? The, the the triad of one-mana removal spells in modern, bolt, path, and push. Mm. All one syllable, all short names, all iconic. Uh, the foil versions of all of these are very expensive. Uh, with good reason. Mm. Um, now, when you go to two-mana, you get a lot more, right? I mean, yeah, you could play Celestial Purge to deal with Tassigers and things like that. Yeah, you, you could play Go for the Throat to kill just about every creature. But the difference between two mana and one mana in Modern is huge. It's just everything. like Legacy, yeah. you know. With the, with cards like uh, with like the, the what really makes like a Grindfest in Modern like be able to break break serve is playing two spells in one turn. Sure, it's yeah. the ability to go threat removal spell in the same turn. That's how you that's how you punish your opponent. And like there are things like. Like I think objectively, the best removal spell in modern is probably um, I would say it's probably terminate. Like if if you want to just go for pure like does this kill everything? Yeah, and yet no it one kills plays terminate. Everything. People play so, you see some terminates, but you don't see as nearly as many terminates as fatal pushes because fatal push is so much more. Yeah, man, it, it, yeah. it just does everything. And coming soon to a FNM near you, <laughs> fatal push promos. Hey, I'll be there. Okay. Every I'll, Friday. I'll be there every Friday, too. Any, anytime, anytime I don't have work. <laughs> I might ask for work off for it. <laughs> so, basically, the schedule of events for today is we're going to play the top eight of the Titanium Plus. The winner will get uh, the invitation to the Titanium Finals and the one-round buy and a hump of cash. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, a lump of cash. The second place will get the invitation to the Titanium Finals as well. Uh, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, they just get cash money, no invitation, but still pretty good. Still, still a lot, yeah, yeah, still a lot of money. Hundreds of dollars, yeah. pretty cool. Um, after leave that... Here, leave here happy. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing our Legacy Challenge, probably jumping in around round two, I'd have to imagine, we'll, we'll miss round one of that, but jumping in around round two, uh, Eric Dupuy going to be joining us in the booth. Uh, he's a Legacy expert, been playing Legacy for a long time, involved in the community, um, and he's, he's going to be our Legacy analytics guy. He knows everything about the format has probably played more uh, legacy in his life than most people in this room uh, he knows a lot about it so if you like legacy if you like seeing dazes and force of wills and spell pierces go back and forth for all for zero mana or one mana stay tuned we're gonna have that for you force your force misdirection your force yeah divert divert your force. <laughs> <laughs> I love divert I love extract disrupting like, shoal your force oh god <laughs> I hope we don't see disrupting shoal today oh mm. I'm, I'm glad we didn't end up seeing it at all in modern. Oh, I, I have I have my playset ready. When they finally unban Jace, I'm gonna play <laughs> four of each of those cards. Four four Shoal, four four Jace. Yes. You're gonna do that's how Absolutely. you're gonna do it. Absolutely. Wow. That's deep. I, I am quite excited for a potential Jace unban. I think it's a safe card for modern. And I think it would make it would make a lot of decks a lot of fun. Yeah, as I mean, long as control doesn't get too good. I don't think it's a safe card for modern. I think it'd probably be too good, but I do want to see it unbanned, and I want to see the craziness it unleashes. Mm -hmm. I mean, think of how good blue-white control is nowadays. Take out Jace Architect of Thought, put in Jace the Mind Sculptor. <laughs> Come on. How much better is that one? It's true. All right, so we have Brandon Smith on Grixis Delver versus Sam Lawrence on Just Guy Black. Um, so I did not initially recognize the name, but I know Brandon Smith. Brandon Smith and I played... Um, a lot of magic together at Jetpack Comics in Rochester back in the day. We see Brennan uh, going for a turn one Seer and Visions off of a um, what looks to be a, a one of the fast lands. Yep, we got the Spire Bluff Serum. The new fast lands, very impactful in modern. Done a lot for uh, for decks to not die to burn <laughs> nearly as much. Mm. Over on Sam's side, we have a Stablet Pass. Brandon plays a Delver. Now Sam back on his turn. He's 
untapped and thinking about what land he wants to play and how he wants to interact with this Delver. Yeah, now he could just slam an early Sahili, but that kind of leaves him vulnerable to the removal, or rather the burn spells from Brandon's side. Um, burn spells that otherwise are going to be kind of dead. I mean, there, there are very few creatures in Sam's deck. Yeah, the issue here being uh, if he slams this one of his uh, Sahilis and this Delver flips, um, Brandon can easily go attack, bolt your guy. Yeah. Even if the Delver does not flip, he can still kill the Sahili at four. With just a bolt, yeah. yeah. It would uh, definitely be good for Sam to remove the Delver before he slams the Sahili, but that may not be a, a, you know, a viable option. I see, I see two Sahili in Sam's hand, so maybe he wants to bait out a bolt here. Because if he's able to go Sahili plus uh, try to find a cat, and then uh, Brandon spends ma the vast majority of his next turn just trying to kill the Sahili, and then he slams another Sahili, and the next turn Brandon doesn't have a bolt, and he just goes attacking, puts Sahili to one. If there's a cat and Brandon doesn't have a removal spell or counter spell, it's over. Yep, so Sahili scries, and like you said, bolt plus Delver takes care of the Sahili, which is fine. It still trades for a card. Mm. And there is a flip here uh, off of a Fatal Push. And there's a, uh, a Thought Scour in upkeep after the trigger because he does not want to draw Fatal Push here. No, I mean, it's 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 good against the eventual combo of Felidar, but he would much rather just keep the Sahili off the board and maintain control. Yeah, there's really no... Re uh, that a, a lot of forethought from Brandon in that, uh, that Thought Scour. I think he might be uh, be attempting to cast a large elf creature. So we've got another Seer Visions. Brand's deck, all foil. Appreciate it. And we have a Grimog Gangler. Wow. That is brutal. It's going to be very difficult for uh, Sam Lawrence to stick a Sahili unless he's sticking the Sahili and the cat in the same turn. Welcome to Modern, where uh, you can spend five mana over the first three turns um, and have a 5-5, five, five, a 3-2 flyer, have killed your opponent's Planeswalker, and manipulated your library, all for five mana. You see Sam staring at his hand. He's got some lands, he's got a Sahili, he's got a path. So he can answer this uh, Gurmog and get it off the table. Um, but the Delver is still going to come in. Wow, does he want to play a Sahili? Oh, he has two Sahilis in hand. He has three Sahilis. Sam on a glut of combo pieces. This is fine, though, because each Sahili is at least going to trade for a card. Because as we see a trade for the Bolt uh, on Brandon's turn, it's going to trade for another card. Unless he has something like an Electrolyze, which I don't believe appears in the deck list. So this should be fine. Yeah. Um, the great thing, also the great thing about... Um, about these multiple Sahilis is that it just keeps baiting out damage. Brennan is is priced into attacking the Sahili every turn to try to get it off the board to assure that he doesn't get comboed out. Um, but that is putting him behind in the damage race and giving Sam more time to find removal, find uh, grindier cards, ways to interact with Brandon and get ahead of him in, a, in board advantage. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Sam's still at 19 life. That's crazy. And there's the second Fatal Push, milled. Ooh. No interest in those Fatal Pushes. So we're going to go fetching with this Bloodstained Mine. Funny you were talking about Terminate before our top eight. The only Terminates in the entire top eight, I believe, are in Brandon Smith's deck. He has three of them. He's three playing terminates. two Fatal Push, three that, Terminate. That sounds like Brandon. He he loves that card. Wow. Big fan. We see uh, we see a Terminate in his hand. Ooh, he says attack you. He's like, all right, going in. can't fight over Sahili anymore. Uh, if you can't kill it in one turn, Wow. might as well not just deal with it at all. Going to play this Tassiger out. Hold up a, uh, a terminate. So if there is a cat, he's baiting. I believe Sam has a cat. Yeah, Sam has the combo. He he just has to think. Oh, should I go for it? I mean, my opponent has obviously left up two mana. He didn't attack my Sahili. 
if I'm Sam, I'm thinking 90% chance Brandon has something here. Mm, yeah, there, there is. Uh, Sam can just wait. He can just go to six mana and attempt to go for the combo all in one turn, um, and then just not care about this the Sahili. Let it, let it die to attacks next turn. Looks to be there is a. Ooh, okay, so he's just gonna go for it. Blink. Do that. I'll go for the combo. You got anything? Brandon has to read this. Probably hasn't played a whole lot of standard. Yeah, a man with the all foil modern deck. That man doesn't play a lot of standard. <laughs> Alright, cat dies in response to the target. So Healy is now at one. And he is going it is going to die this turn. Most definitely. So it's gonna be Delver Sahili for it you. Yeah, we're looking at a three-turn clock either way, so it definitely makes sense to get the Planeswalker off the board. Now, if, if Sam was at something like 12, then we might have seen Brandon just attack Sam's life toll directly, say, okay, you're dead on board, do something, or you're dead on board. Yeah. yeah so we see, uh, we see a fetch from Brandon here. Uh, Sam currently, in his hand, he is on a Coligan's Command and a um, Sahili Rai. So he can kill... This Delver, make Brandon discard a card, or he can kill the Delver, return the Felidar Guardian. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, uh, but Brandon goes for Task for Activation. Ooh, looks like a, a Terminate back to hand from that activation. Interesting choice, giving him the Terminate, not the Lightning Bolt. Um, so. Either, either interacts with the combo, because if you bolt the Sahili in response to the first activation, the Sahili dies, and then uh, you have one hasted, one four cat, and that is it. Uh, it still gets in for one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's true. That is one whole damage. Now, the blue delta does represent a white source to activate that shambling vent. So, while Sam is at 12, he is a little more play. All right, so upkeep. He's going to go Colgan's Command to attempt to kill your Delver and return this cat. And it's going to happen. Then he goes strong. He's going to play out that mountain he had in hand earlier. He's going to go for a Tasker activation. Flip two. We have a Terminate, Bolt, Serum Visions, Delver. It's going to give him the Delver back. Yeah, at least impactful card there. It's just a Fugitive Wizard right now. Nice. All right. Plays it out. And he's going to pass the turn. We have a Fetch on Sam's side. Now, if Sam rips land, he can potentially go for combo again. But if you remember, the first Tasker activation, he gave him back a Terminate. So, unable to combo yet again this turn. Found in a gate. Okay, now if he had infinite mana, he would win the game here. <laughs> it's truth. That's what so, I said when I draft cut to ribbons two, though, and that doesn't work. So now, uh, Sam is required to have now eight mana to be able to uh, win the game on the spot. Unless he, ooh, okay, so he's just going to go for Felidar Guardian. Going to blink a land. All right, that's, this, is, this is actually quite good. Uh, Brandon did not respond to the blink trigger uh, with this Terminate. So this Terminate is going to be met with a negate. Yeah, a little poor timing there for Brandon. It might end up costing him if he doesn't have another kill spell. Yeah, if he, uh, if he does not have another kill spell or uh, gets a removal spell off of this Tasker activation. All right, so he looks at the top, uh, sees it is not a, uh, a spell, does not have to reveal off the Delver trigger. Um, and he activates Tasker in response. Uh, gets back the Seer Visions. Now he is staring at a hand that might not be able to answer this combo. Actually, I see a, uh, a Coligan's Command in his hand. Ah, oh, he just so drew there, it. There we go. All right, so that is that is an out. And he's going to go for Seer Visions. Draw cards, try to. Definitely set this Delver up if he can. Top, bottom. 
go attacking. Four. Sam unable to block if he wants to try to win here. Uh, goes Delver. Ah, uh, Snapple to you. As so many games in Modern End, yeah. Snapple. <laughs> It's it's with Bolt falling by the wayside with the uh, the advancement of push in the format. Uh, a lot of people forgot that snap uh, Bolt snap Bolt is still a uh, an interaction that happens. It's frustrating, man. You think you're safe at nine, eight, ten life somewhere in that range, and end of turn, you know they have a one one. They just go flurry Bolt snap Bolt untap, clear your blocker, attack for three. That's the game. Or activate their colony, attack for six. That's the game. It's so frustrating, and a part of why these blue red these blue white red decks are so good because they have that. Uh, that's just kind of ability to end the game on the spot. Mm -hmm. Brandon, most definitely showing the power of Grixis Delver there. Showing the power of, of Tassiger. Just insane card. When that card was first printed, I did not see it at first. I, I will admit that. I, I, I looked at that card and I had no idea. And then, and then, <laughs> and then the first modern deck lists of that week were published. Yeah, no. And I was like, oh. Oh, turn two, four, five with oh, a good yeah. ability? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Huh. Yeah, Turns it's, out that's good. It just it just smashes people? Okay. So looking ahead to the sideboards here, uh, Sam Lawrence on the back foot. He did drop the game to this Grixis Delver deck, the aggro control deck. In his sideboard, he has Fulminator Mages, Lingering Souls, Blessed Alliance, Stony Silence, and then a bunch of one-offs, like... Colagons, Dispel, Collective Brutality, Static Caster, Kozilek's Return. What do you see him siding in in this matchup against the Grixis Delver deck? Um, let's see. So I definitely see the Lingering Souls and the Colagons Command coming in. Uh, Dispel is a good one. Uh, possibly the Collective Brutality if he wants to try to disrupt him. Uh, Static Caster doesn't really do much. Kozilek's Return, not great. Uh, Blessed Alliance is a possibility because it does uh, beat a Tassiger. Yeah, there are quite, so few ways to kill Tassiger. Quite efficiently. Um, not Fulminator though, right? Yeah, no, not Fulminator. I don't think uh, you really want Fulminator in this matchup. Uh, Brandon can uh, very easily function on a, a, on two to three lands, so you don't really want to try to fight him on his mana sources. Sure. Yeah. On the other side, though, uh, we have the Brandon's deck. Uh, he's got Engineer Explosives, Ancestral Visions, Dispel, Ceremonious Rejection, Clutch Brutality, Counter Squall, Rakdos Charm. Is it Static Caster and Anger of the Rakdos Lies? Charm. Rakdos Charm. That's wild. That is quite wild in this matchup. Because what can happen is, if Sam goes... Uh, okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go combo. And he declare, he declare you have to declare a number of cats you make, okay? so And most people are just going to say, you know, a million cats. Ten yeah. million cats. Yeah. Whatever. Um... Trying to bring their opponent to negative 10 million. Yeah, yeah, you know, just just, just overkill just, just in case. And most people don't think, oh, I'm just going to make just enough cats to get through your blockers, beat a removal spell, and kill you. Uh, because what could possibly punish you? Oh, Rakdos Charm. What's Rakdos Charm do for those of us who don't has a mode. One of its three modes is for two mana, you can have each, for each creature, a player controls, they take one damage. Nice. So you take... Two from say a Delver and Tasker, and then they take ten million from their ten million haste cats. So a twenty million point life swing. Yes, it's quite good for two mana. I'd say that's pretty efficient. <laughs> so those are definitely coming in. Uh, counter Squall, maybe. It's I'd, another, I'd say that's pretty good. Yeah. Counter for Sahili. Uh, Ancestral Vision, Actual maybe. Song. He actually has a lot of good sideboard cards. Yeah. So Brandon Smith up a game with the Grixis Delver deck. I have to like his chances. I definitely, I definitely like. Um, I like Brendan, Brendan's shot here. I think there are situations, though, where Brendan can draw dead um, for one or two turns and just get sneaked in. You know, Sam Lawrence's deck is essentially just a sorcery speed version of the Splinter Twin deck. Yeah. It's a, it's a, a, very, a very telling version where there's a Planeswalker on board and you know it could happen, but you have to just, just play your best. It's, it's really interesting uh, that Sam Lawrence's deck, he doesn't have the card the card selection that the old Splinter Twin decks have, right? He doesn't have the preordains. He doesn't have the ponders before ponder was banned and also preordained. He has four Serum Visions. That's pretty much all he has. That's his entire card selection to support his 16 one-ofs in the main deck. And the other thing is he has substantially less combo pieces because the old Twin decks played four Twin, they played four to Seabrex Arc, and they played... Two to three, two to three, sometimes even four pester might. So there were essentially like between ten and 
12 combo pieces. And sometimes they would play a Kiki Jiki or two as mm -hmm. well, just as an additional version of Splinter Twin. Um, Sam is only on four of each half of the combo. So he needs to be able to find both halves efficiently. Yeah, so he's, he's, he has his back up against the wall. He has less sideboard cards than Brandon does. Uh, and he's down a game, and it's a tough matchup for him. So it's going to be really hard for Sam to win. He's also mulling to six cards. Ooh, he's going to have to have tight play and maybe get a little lucky, too, to defeat Brandon here. Mm. He couldn't do it in game one when he had the play uh, as the fourth seed. Um, he actually didn't even... Well, he did come close. I guess he was one spell away. Kind of, he was he was always like, Brandon just had one too many spells for him. I think that's that's how a lot of games against Tempo go, though. Yeah. You just, you're one spell behind, and you just can't, ooh, a multi five. That's brutal. Not this way. Oh, the, 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 the face on Sam right now. He just, he is not happy about what's going on. He's happy to be here, at least. He's happy to be here. He's happy to be in top eight, but man, if this is how his day ends. <laughs> brutal. Yeah, I talked to him briefly yesterday. I know he really wanted the invite to the Titanium Finals. He really wanted to be to earn the spot next January uh, to compete for a $5,000 prize pool that was only among 24 people. Uh because that's a cushy event. That's a nice event to qualify for. Mm. But he's going to have to have a perfect hand here to do it. Oh, wow. Look at the number of fatal pushes in his hand. That's really good. So he has he has a number of lands, at least two fatal push. So he can he can interact with everything but a Tasker here. Oh, and a Gurmag Angler, I guess. But there are not many Gurmag Anglers in Brandon's list. So less chance of having to deal with that. Yep, so Sam... Has the early game on lock, he says, okay, well, as long as it's just Delvers and Young Pyromancers creeping Tar Pits, that's okay. Mm. But unfortunately for Sam, the Grixis Delver decks, and these Grixis decks in general, just have so much card selection and card rock card advantage. Look at this Ancestral Visions, mm. that it's going to be really difficult for him to, to fade the seven drops and the six drops. It's going to be really hard. Yeah, if... if if Sam does not find a way to answer this uh, Ancestor Visions via some kind of counterspell, it's going to be real brutal for him. All right, so we have a turn to Delver. With no land from Brandon, though. Wow! All right, so he, he, he got a one land hand? Gets, uh, I mean, with the Visions. It's a little risky, but... Wow, your opponent's on the play, goes to six, and you have the stones to keep a one-land hand, Brandon Smith, in a good matchup? Wow. I don't know that I could do that. Brandon, you know, no guts, no glory. I that's, guess that, so, that, man. That's his, ooh, tap, tap the top. This is about the only way that you can lose to a multi five. Mm -hmm. All right, so another land off the of top of Sam's deck. Brandon ticks down his Ancestor Visions. Draws, finds the land. Rewarded. Not punished. And he's going to Thought Scour himself. He's going to attempt to set up a Tassiger. And if he has a Tassiger in hand, he can just cast it here. Which is pretty wild. And it goes Shock. Oh, just pass him. Wow, says go. Another land from Sam. Imagine if he just had a Sahili. That would be ruling the board, and there'd be no easy way for Brandon Smith to uh, to get rid of it. Sam could have easily just run away with this Mulda 5 here if he had the right card. And so we see uh, Brandon has drawn a Dispel. He has a Bolt. He has a Young Pyromancer. Plays a top creeping carpet. Plays a Delver out. This Delver is probably going to get Is it Static Aster. Ooh, he brought in the Is it Static Aster. <laughs> Now, is a static caster quite good against Young Pyromancer, but Young Pyromancer only a one of in Brandon Smith's list. Yeah, a little surprising to me that he brought in the static caster. He already has the low creatures on lock with the fatal pushes. I think he just wanted to have another, like, an assurance that he's not going to lose to a Delver. Because I know losing to a Delver is pretty miserable. I, I don't like losing to Delvers. Nobody wants to lose to a Delver. And is a static caster is an assurance that a Delver will never flip. It will just die every time. 
yeah, he must have had a lot of cards he wanted to side out in this matchup because the Staticaster is like the the eighth sideboard card that I'd have brought in if I was Sam. Mm. Like the eighth one that I wanted. And wow, wow. just tackle Ooh. Shambling Vent. Sam's hand so empty that he's just coming in with a Shambling Vent. Yeah. Brandon thinking about uh, this Bolt sitting his hand, but he's just going to take two. He's like, no, that's fine. And the turn chooses to use the bolt and the static caster instead. Okay, so he resolving this ancestral visions wants this pyromancer to go crazy. Yeah, it makes sense. That, that that line makes a lot of sense. He needs to get that in order to get this pyromancer into play. He has to kill that static caster. We'll start with a discard spell. It looks like or oh no nope. oh no no Gurmy. Even better for one black a five five. One mana, five five. Nice. And so he's going to exile uh, the spells he does not want back with a Tasker or Snapcaster at any point, and a land. And he's just going to pass back with a five five. And Sam uh, has a path in hand though. Has a way to answer this. Spreading seas. Yeah, that is a four of in Sam Lawrence's deck list. He says, okay, the four best colors in modern, a format as wide as modern. I'm going to play four cantrips. I'm going to play four spreading seas. That's the best he can do. Uh, but hey, it looks pretty good here. It's going to cut off Brandon's only red source or the man land. Ooh, uh, interesting here. It seems there has been a, a discrepancy. It looks like the, the spreading seas was cast. Um, I do not know if, if the question of target was asked from, from Brandon or not. Because uh, if Brandon asked if he is targeting, what he's targeting, um, how Spreading Seas works is it targets after resolution. All right, Spreading Seas is going to resolve. Now, if one of these two fatal pushes was just a path to exile, Sam would be in okay shape. I mean, he'd still be down, like, six cards this game, something like that. He actually, he does have a path to exile. Oh, he does. Good, he okay. Has, he, has, he has a push, path to exile, a snapcaster mage, and another blue card. All right. All right. So upkeep. He's going to fire off this path. It's going to be responded to with a dispel. Is gonna go attacking. The other blue card being an island. A quick shock here. And there's gonna be a oh, Tassiger. Wow. That is. Oof. That's real good. Yeah, no access to Supreme Verdict. Uh, does Sam Lawrence have? He he has no way to kill more than one creature at once. Uh, he relies solely on paths and pushes, snapcasters and coligons. Supreme Verdict would be prime here, but none to be found. And unless he asks for a bathroom break and goes to run to the dealer booth, I don't think that's going to happen. I feel like that would cause a problem or two. Yeah, he'd have to get, like, white sleeves too. Uh, he'd have to, like, you know, he'd have to roll for distraction. Uh, it's not going to happen. Yeah. All right, so there's going to be a collective brutality. Starting Brandon. Yep, clearly this is the discard mode. Two life not going to matter on this board state. Minus two, minus two doesn't do anything to the creatures. Simply the rest here. Brandon is thinking about this. He's just going to reveal his hand. Show Sam a hand of remand. Snapcaster. Young Pyromancer. Uh, this is what OBS looks like. And Thoughts Guy. Fully set up with overlays and everything. And <laughs> Sam's like, well, oh, man, yeah, not, I'm drawing dead. Yeah, it's not, this is not <laughs> great. We are using Dropbox to collect data and transmit in data instead of uh, editing sources. Real so, tough matchup for Sam Lawrence. This is exactly the kind of deck that Brandon wanted to play against. A dirtily do nothing deck that doesn't put any pressure on him that lets him do his thing that has the, only, no the only thing he has to worry about is getting comboed and he just needs a piece of disruption or two a turn and 
He can just come in with these giant creatures. Yep. So snap coming in. Yeah, so snap path the attempted play here. But there was a spell snare drawn. Oh my. And even if there wasn't, Brandon could have snap snared, snap remanded, any of these things. Uh, really just all around tough game for, for Sam. Whenever you mull the five and your opponent draws three extra cards on turn four or five, it's really hard to win. So Sam staring at, uh, yep, he, he was staring at Vidalian Click in a, um, a fatal push at the end, and he knew that his time was up. It does not matter what he does with the Vidalian Click, whether he blocks, whether he flashes in, whether he targets himself, whether he targets his opponent. He was going to die. Actually, there was a, there was a potential one. He could have flashed it in, targeted himself, put the path the the push to the bottom, and drawn a path to exile. Okay. Um, but that the, the chances of that are so minute that Sam decided uh, I, I'm just not going to win this match. Just scoop him up. All right. So that was the first round of top eight. It was the, the our first match. We saw uh, four colors Healy Cat. Be felled by good old Delver. Yeah. Delver and friends. Delver is the boogeyman. Him and Death Shadow, no matter which version of Grixis, backed by Tassigers and the Gurmags that you play, it's still going to beat up on decks like this, right? It's mm. still going to make the format, make you be honest in the format, make you have a cohesive game plan uh, with not sketchy mana, ways to interact with creatures and counter spells. You know, it's the classic aggro control deck. Yeah. Uh, you know, this this is the deck that makes you not able to play tooth and nail, say, and do well in modern. <laughs> like, your your boy Tupper would have been destroyed by this deck, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't think it would have worked out for him. No, no. There are, there. I mean, there are some situations where they don't have the counter spell and you tooth and nail them, but... Uh, yeah, pretty few and far between. There are situations where you uh, Felidar Sahili them too, but those clearly didn't come up. Did not happen. Yeah, I, I love Sam Lawrence's deck. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. The list, list, list will be out there. Yeah. Available. Yeah, absolutely. Pick it up. Bring it to your local P PPTQ. This is modern PPTQ season, so you can take any of these lists, build them up, bring them to any PPTQ in your region. There we go. I mean, this this deck built around four of Mythic Rare. It's a five dollar Mythic Rare, so that's okay. Yeah. Most expensive part's going to be the mana base, but I think you can pick up your Glacial Fortresses, Sulfur Falls, Shambling Vents, Snapcasters. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. yeah. Ugh. I mean, they got better with Modern Modern Masters. Yeah, true. Probably gonna be printed in every Master set from now till the end of time. Hopefully, we need we need at least like four more Snapcaster printings. Four more good. So who who moves on here? Brandon Smith. You Brandon said you know him. Good guy. From back in the day. Back in the day. When did you play with him? Uh, we used to play Monday nights at Jetpack Comics. Play some play a little bit of Modern. Uh, it was always a good time. Some um some mat sometimes. Uh, there would only be six players to an event. It was me, Rob Castellan, Brandon, uh, and some, a bunch of other hmm. uh, other other guys who used to be there just every, every week. And we'd just sit down and we'd play a, a non-sanctioned tournament, just a little round robin. Oh, yeah. A little bit of fun. Rob, our head judge today. It's, it's funny in Magic. It's like these little communities. Everyone oh. spreads out, goes their own way, and then you meet back with them years later because yeah. no one quits Magic. <laughs> so, uh, those of you who are who like Legacy, we're going to be doing a lot of Legacy coverage later today. We have our Legacy Challenge. I'm um, probably going to be joining that in about round two. Uh, joining us in the booth is going to be Eric Dupuy, renowned Legacy player, has more Legacy experience than you and I combined, that's for oh, sure. That, we're, we are a fraction of what he knows. I've talked about a lot of Legacy, but playing it? I haven't played it in a few years. So we're going to get Eric in the booth to introduce himself, tell us what he's all about, tell us about his company. Uh, I'm sure we'll see you in a little bit. Maybe for top four, we'll see. We'll confer with Gil on that. Uh, but I'll, I'll be back. Yeah, until then, see you soon. Mr. Eric. Hey, Zach. How's it going? Good, man. Nice to finally meet in person. Yeah, you too, man. Welcome all to Worcester. Right. Dollar twenty-five, please. All right. <laughs> Oh, it's exciting to be here. Yeah, tell us about yourself. I mean, well, I should say, tell me about yourself, because I don't know much about you. Well, I play Legacy every week at a score, uh, store named Scholars. It's over in Brockton, Mass. Uh, we've got a great crowd there. They run uh, monthly and uh, quarterly events as well. Oh, cool. Uh, they also do vintage. So I, I really just play Eternal. Uh, I, since the beginning, I've always advocated people get their set of dual lands mm -hmm. and fetch lands, mm -hmm. and 
I'll tell you, from almost 20 years ago, it's starting to look like uh, that might have been the play. <laughs> might have been the play. It's, a, it's a long-term policy. It is. It is. I'm actually working on my place of unlimited duels. Uh, it's slow going because those are kind of hard to find. You see like 20 revised for every one unlimited. But I'm getting there. All right. I'm well, trying. I'm the type of guy that can help you with that, too. If you ever, <laughs> anything you're ever looking for that's eternal, I've, I've got. I was actually, uh, if you were looking for a little backstory, that's how I got involved with Wormwood. Oh, yeah? I was actually running a vintage event at Scholars. Okay. And uh, the guys from Wormwood at that point had an Etsy shop. They showed up, and that's how it kind of all grew from there. I was like, I've been in this space for a very long time. We can definitely get you set up, you know, distribution. Meeting the right people, getting the right ideas, and, and we actually just signed a, uh, a contract with Hasbro a, a oh, little nice. while ago. If, if anybody caught the Pro Tour coverage uh, this weekend, you'll actually see bumper ads there for our new um, actual official license Magic the Gathering playmats okay. and deck boxes. So. And that's hard to do. I know Hasbro and Wizards, they do not give those out to just anybody. That is very true. <laughs> that is very true. So that was... That was really, uh, when I teamed up with them, that was the, the goal. And, yeah. Uh, it's really exciting to finally get there. So for those of us who don't know what Wormwood is, now I, I saw I saw the booth at PAX, and I saw one of the ads on the Magic Pro Tour, but I've never actually played with one of the deck boxes. What is it exactly? Uh, so we handcraft gaming mm -hmm. accessories uh, out of premium hardwoods. I actually happened to bring one. If you don't mind grabbing my, my bag over there, I can actually get that on ah, camera if we've got some We time. should, we should. Um, so yeah, we, we work in natural materials, uh, and nice. they're all heirloom quality. They're all designed to last a lifetime. Uh, so that's really... Our goal is to create gaming accessories that go on that journey with you, something that becomes more valuable to you over time because okay. it, it's there on the trip. You know, when you think back to, you know, playing in, you know, Eternal Champs or, you know, a Titanium Series, the time you top aided, that same deck box is actually going to be able to, to travel with you because they're all guaranteed for life. Uh, you see here, this is actually Peruvian Walnut. Uh, it's a darker walnut than American Walnut. Some, some uh, you know, amateur woodworkers may be familiar with Black Walnut. It's kind of the nicest domestic wood. Uh, we go South American with this and get a darker version. It's harder to work with, but it really makes this inlay pop. That's actually crushed turquoise right there uh, so we, we actually create a mortise which is a woodworking technique for a, a concave or a hole uh, and then we actually fill that in with crushed turquoise sand it all flush and uh, that is something that will stay with you literally forever your kids will be fighting over who gets that one uh, and then we also work with natural materials like leather uh, to create play mats that also will last a lifetime. This I did see. Paul at my local store had one of these. Uh, this is a collector's item, right? There were only a certain number of these made? Yes, right. everything that we teamed up with Wizards of the Coast is limited edition uh, in one way or another. So these play mats uh, with the Magic the Gathering uh, kind of throwback motif here, uh, only 100 of those will be made. Only 100 each of them inlaid mana symbols will be made and then we have an unlimited cherry edition that's just engraved cherry boxes even though it's unlimited they're still only being made for 2017 so we might okay. make a hundred or a thousand whatever it is though that'll be it for that specific yeah deck that's box. that's really cool because the you know the deck box space and the playmat space yeah it's been occupied by mid-range brands and okay products but to see something really quality is pretty cool uh i might have to ditch my uh my Japanese anime flimsy little deck box there. Throw there that in the go. garbage. Get one of those. I think I'd probably get a blue. I respect that. I, I totally identify with that. <laughs> I, I self-identify as a blue mage myself. Yeah, you have to. So you're a big legacy player. You're a blue mage. What is best in legacy right now? I mean, Brainstorm, I'm a big fan of. Uh, it kind of defines legacy to yeah. me. Uh, the ability to find answers or threats at instant speed on par with Ancestral Recall yeah. is pretty bonkers. Uh, it, it really is a skill testing card mm -hmm. and you know you can kind of you can push it to certain levels. Any blue deck is gonna run Brainstorm for the most part uh, but then you might have a deck like Infect uh, where Brainstorm is so crucial because okay. you have this bizarre mix of Infect creatures, enablers with pump spells, yeah. permission, mana. Like, you really need everything to come together all at once so in that deck Brainstorm really, really carries a lot of weight. Uh, whereas a control deck, you know, you may have more of a redundancy of answers, sweepers, that type of stuff. So, right, you know, right. as long as you get like a reasonably close card, you're fine. Uh, it, it really just depends on how hard you want to push it. Okay. Know, similar to Death Right Charm, that's another card that I think defines the format right now. And different decks depend on it to varying degrees. Uh, a deck like Elves 
it's it almost feels redundant because you have a lot of mana producing elves. Right. But then it gives you that extra utility of being able to disrupt reanimator, hit a life from the loam to stop them from getting their engine going. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that Deathrite Shaman can, can kind of interact with your opponent and enable your own strategy. Uh, but then if you go to, say, like a four-color control list, all of a sudden Deathrite is just crucial to the deck. Because yeah. you are just pulling your mana base to the extreme. Sometimes people are running like 18 mana sources with four wastelands. So, you know, you really need that Deathrite to be able to produce the mana you need on curve in the early game and then be around as a finisher later. Exactly. Um, so yeah, really, I think there's a lot of very powerful cards and they kind of fit into different decks differently. Sometimes they're just the absolute MVP, other times they're just a really solid role player. Um, but I think cards like Deathrite Shaman, Brainstorm, you know, those are those are starting to define the metagame. Um, Leovold, Leovold, nowadays. Yeah, he's, he is really, even still with as powerful as he is, I think it's very likely if you're observing a tournament, you're going to see that, oh, no, I brainstormed. Mm -hmm. Just, like, completely forget he's on board. They're like, oh, i got to get rid of this guy. <laughs> brainstorm. <laughs> it's like, oh, what's happening? That's not how that works. <laughs> no, he's really... He, he is very, very solid. Yeah, the, the role of creatures in Legacy, it's been... It's been really great to see that evolve from, you know, that first uh, GP uh, back when, like, Goblins was the best oh, yeah. deck. Uh, to now, it's, it's just, you know... A huge variety of, of creature strategies. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, now we actually have a something completely different. No force of wills. No brainstorms. No days is here. We have our quarterfinal match. Our backup match. Uh, no coincidence that the control deck versus the control deck is still outstanding. They're going to game two. Looks like Sam Richardson won game one. So, as long as you help me with Legacy, Eric, I'll help you with Modern. All right. <laughs> it's a pact. So, I, I have to imagine that we're going to see a pretty slow start uh, with Sam Richards and having the inevitability in the late game. So, I expect to see Steve Mullahu making the first move, whether it's turn three, turn six, turn nine. He should be the one making the proactive plays, I think. Yeah, Colonnade is not a card that you would see in Legacy, but uh, <laughs> how, how does that fit into the, the modern metagame right now? How solid is Colonnade? Uh, in Sam's deck, it's a four of. It's one of the key finishers. and uh, Oh, and here we see a Vendillion click. Another good finisher for Sam. But uh, the while Steve thinks of his response, it's more the threat of Colonnade than the actual Colonnade itself a lot of the times. The opponent's like, man, I can't tap out because then the Colonnade kills me or then the colonnade threatens to bring me to four life, to three life. Click is a card that we are very familiar with over in Legacy. That is an excellent way to disrupt an opponent and actually set a clock. Yeah, it's funny, when Vendillion Click was first printed, no one, well, few people thought it was really good. It was like a three or four dollar card for years. I don't at least months, maybe years. No one really realized its power somehow. I mean, now it looks so good, but... Yeah, certainly after fairies rotated out, uh, a lot of those cards people really were not excited about. Right. I think it was kind of indistinguishable from the rest of the pack for a lot of people, but it, it's been very good. I think one of the things that pushes it over in Legacy is the fact that you can bounce it with your own Karakas, making ah. him also recurring removal, a recurring disruption, and very difficult to deal with. Uh, but it looks like here um, he is going to get dealt with. I am not familiar with that card. What is that one? Okay, this is Spell Queller, uh, recent edition in Eldritch Moon. This is a three mana flash, two, three flyer. When it comes into play, you exile a uh, card with Converted Man across four or less. So it, it kind of counters it, but when it leaves play, the player can cast that spell again. I see. So let's say Sam Path to exiles the Spell Queller, the Vendillion Click can be cast. Do you want to get rid of this? Almost like a mix between delay and. Uh, Tide Hollow Sculler, something like that. And it's powerful enough that Sam just wants to Supreme, Supreme Verdict it. Right. That card, believe it or not, is good enough for Legacy as well. Wow. That is really hard to play around. Supreme Verdict, hard to play around? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a lot you can do to stop it. Okay. Like it's, you think you're all set, you've got your, your team together, and just... Clears the board. Yep, so it looks like with the Vendillion trigger on the stack, 
Steve bolts the click. Uh, with Vendillion click, often the click uh, views your hand and takes the only removal spell. So Steve going to try and preempt that. Sam answers with the dispel. The click lives and gets its trigger. Going to take the best card from Steve's hand, put it on the bottom of the deck. Now, just to catch you up on these two players, Sam went 7-0-1 through the Swiss yesterday, yesterday, so he crushed the tournament. Uh, had to play out round 7, won, drew in round 8. Steve Mullahu uh, snuck into 8th place um, with the very worst breakers of the 6-1-1s. He was lucky to get there. I think if one other match didn't go his way, he wouldn't have top aided. And that is all in the past now. Just the excitement of the top eight. As long as you're there, you're live. Exactly. So snappy, put on the bottom. No lightning bolts for Steven, not yet anyway. Sam wants to pressure his opponent with this Vendillion click. Make his opponent tap out, hopefully on his own turn, so Sam can resolve something brutal like Planeswalker. And you'll see as the game goes later and later, as Steve drops lower and lower, this colonnade is going to be at the forefront of Steven's mind. It's going to have to be. He'll have to bluff a path to exile if nothing else. I imagine Colonnade serves a very similar role to Creeping Tarpit in some of the control decks uh, where you really want to tap out for a Planeswalker, but it's just not going to happen. Yeah, you just can't do it. Just a free Vindicate. Okay, Serum Visions. Probably a card that seems really weak to you. Oh, he's got a Scry. There we go. Yeah, it's... it's uh, it's not great to just rip one off the top blind. Uh, Sleight of Hand is a, a card that I've I played in, in Vintage before, <laughs> just to get oh, a little man. bit of card selection. <laughs> yeah, just uh, you're really you're really praying with Serum Vision or hoping that the game goes long enough that those scries are, are highly relevant. It looks like he's happy with what's on there. So, top and top snap. snap bolt. Yeah, that is a legacy looking play, but he is tapped out. And really not a whole lot going on for Sam Richardson. He doesn't have a, a proactive play to make right now. He could Detention Sphere the Snapcaster. Seems pretty bad. Uh, he has a Mana Leak effect in his hand in Supreme Will. And he has a Snapcaster, which... Flashing back Supreme Verdict with Snapcaster. Not the greatest play. It looks like he's thinking about just attacking for four here. That's not good when that's uh, your best play for five mana. Oh, well, he will have Dispel up, uh, but it does shut off the, the Snapcaster. I'm oh, sorry, Mana Leak you said was in his hand? Yeah, it's a, it's a new card from Hour of Devastation. It's Supreme Will. It's three mana Mana Leak. It's either choose one, three uh, Mana Leak, or Impulse. Oh, I see. Expensive, though. So he would not be able to attack and keep that up then? Right. Shields would be down. Celestial Colonnade for Steven. That's that alternate art. Pass the turn. We may be in a little bit of Drago here. Now, is that a, is that a cryptic command in Steven's hand there? Is that what I recognize? I think so. It's a cryptic, and Sam knows about it. So Sam can have full knowledge of the four-mana counter. Sure to not just play into it. And we've got this impulse effect. Yeah, Mana Leak, New Gideon, or a pair of lands. All of which are going to be pretty hard to resolve through a cryptic command. Like he takes the Planeswalker. Now this is after sideboard, so both players are going to have access to the one mana counters in Dispel. Maybe uh, game-breaking effects like uh, Crucible of Worlds for Sam, recurring Ghost Quarter or Tech Edge, uh, and Geist of St. Traffs. So this isn't the game one where each player has a bunch of path to exiles in their deck.
Now the modes on this Gideon, which which one is this here? Oh, so this is Gideon of the Trials. This is brand new Gideon from Amon Ket. The Egyptian plain, he roams the dunes, he goes plus one, he starts with three loyalty, he goes plus one, target permanent doesn't cannot deal damage until the next turn. So it shuts off things like Eidolon of Revels, it shuts off it shuts down any one permanent. Uh, so it protects itself. Zero mana becomes a 4-4 four, four creature with Indestructible, like all Gideons do. And for zero mana, you get an emblem that says you can't lose the game as long as you have a Gideon Planeswalker. So really good against combo decks. Oh, it looks like we may be seeing a Snapcaster Supreme Verdict now. This may be enough value to, to get the Gideon back and clear two threats. Absolutely. Oh, no, he's got a Detention Sphere. All right. He probably secretly wished that the Detention Sphere was countered to be honest, so, so he could do the play that you wanted, the uh, the snap verdict. But this is fine, too. And this is a nice play from Sam Richard. Nice sequencing, nice tapping. He leaves up Ghost Quarter to deal with the Colonnade. Because Gideon is protected from that Manland. So Gideon, pretty good, going to threaten to be a 4-4 indestructible creature turn after turn. A card that really is only answerable with a path or a bounce spell from Steve. Destroy effects don't work. So from this point, knowing what we know, who do you see as the favorite in this game? We've got a Planeswalker taking care of Snapcaster, we've got Ghost Quarter to stop the Colonnade. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right. I think Sam is pretty favored. Uh, but it's a loose house of cards if any one piece gets taken out, if the Detention Sphere gets taken out, if the Gideon gets taken out, the Ghost Quarter somehow disappears. Um, it's really favorable for Steve, but right now none of those things are going to happen and Sam's just going to attack for four. He's going to put the pressure on. Steve forces the quarter. And plenty of basics, it looks like. A beautiful lightning planes. Finishes off the turn of the Serum Visions. Now, it's no preordain, but you can see in games that go as long as this, it's pretty close to the same thing. Yeah, I'd imagine if you don't need the answer right now, you're, you're pretty happy seeing that, to have some optionality as the game goes on. Yeah. It was interesting. I saw uh, a really good article uh, just the other day written by... Rich Shea uh, talking about Turbo Xerox strategies, and oh, yeah. that's why they have to ban all these cards. Ponder's banned, Preordain's banned, Serum Visions, people have talked about getting banned. It's not powerful enough to get banned, in my opinion, but just the fact that it's even up for debate is pretty shocking, and uh, it speaks to the power of cantrips lowering your land count. Yeah, it has been a very successful strategy since its inception. I, even in Vintage, uh, I, before Fetch Lands, I was running Land Grant along hmm. with Brainstorm, and a lot of cantrips, Sleight of Hand was actually one of them in that era. And it felt like I really was playing a different game than everyone else. Right. You know, they, they would always have these turns where they were just essentially bricking, drawing land after land. Uh, and especially when Gush was legal, you were picking up your lands, putting them back down, and you know, really just operating so smooth on just a couple of lands, whereas the control decks here, as you see, you know, they, they pretty well want to be hitting their land drops. Uh, before the advent of that strategy, you could probably tell who was going to win a control match by the first person who missed their land drop right. was probably going to lose. And you know, that really shook that up and, and created uh, even the, the concept of uh, a control deck that's swarming with creatures that was that was unheard of at the time i remember melissa del toro uh, at the time had kind of joked about you know maybe maybe someday there'll be a, a aggro stompy 
or like a counter stompy. And that was like a, that was an amusing term when she said it. like the idea of like counters. I mean, that's that's really what Delver decks are. Right. Is, is they've right. got the counters. They're they're able to beat down. They're able to play multiple roles depending on what the the game state needs. And uh, deck design has really just improved dramatically. And, and that's why I actually enjoy keeping an eye on modern, even though I rarely play. Uh, I do buy and sell a lot of cards. So sometimes if somebody sells me like a complete uh, affinity deck, actually recently I, I had to take that out for a drive. And it was it was good. I mean, I, I walked through the tournament. Uh, it, it felt very unfair, which is what I'm looking for. Yep. Uh, I played against a lot of the... Um, I forget what it's called. Lingering Souls deck. Oh, Mayo. yeah. What, is it? what do they call uh, it? Abzan. Abzan, just really yeah. boring Abzan. Yeah, I played against that uh, three times in Elves, and I was down the red enchantment, that pings thing. Oh, yeah, the Aether Grid. I didn't know what it was for. That card is... Oh, my God. <laughs> I, you learned firsthand how good that card is. As soon as it started, I was like, oh, no, this would, this would really change this matchup. Uh, but, yeah, I think the, the thing with Modern is there's so much brain power on it. Uh, that you can really kind of glean some insight into the game. Uh, it, it's just so much effort goes in that you start to see things that you might not realize. I actually just sleeped up Death's Shadow in Legacy. Oh. Uh, never would have thought to do that, but somebody had top aided an SCG with it. I yep. wanted to, to take it for a spin, and that's obviously directly influenced by Modern. Um, now, so. it seems like here, sorry to cut you off here, Eric, but we're, we're in the middle of a judge call here. It seems like Sam has a... Uh, Accidentally scryed three with the serum visions, so we're not going to speculate on what the uh, what the results might be. We're just going to get that from the judge when it's done. Uh, but regardless, we're going to make sure the right ruling gets made. Uh, they're going to make sure the right ruling gets made, and that the game state's maintained. I do not believe he's scryed anything to the bottom. Is that correct? I, Hard I, to say. I don't remember what the last serum visions was. Oh, they're going to let him select which one. Imagine we don't want to see Cryptic Command. <laughs> that seems like it'd be quite good here. It's it's always interesting, and in years past, I'm sure you remember this. This used to be something like a game loss sometimes, uh, but now they let the opponent choose which card gets shuffled in. They let the opponent gain an advantage basically off this, um, and then Sam gets to scry too. Definitely a good fix. Much better rule set in terms of drawing and looking at extra cards. Much better. Yeah, culturally the game has changed tremendously. Yeah. Uh, the, kind of the much less punitive nature of the rules I think opens it up for a lot of people to just avoid those severe feel-bads like when they go to their first big tournament and then they lose for, for kind of something that doesn't feel like losing a match of magic. Right, right. Something that maybe at home, at their home play group during testing, their opponent would shrug it off. Their friend would say, oh, just shuffle your deck. It doesn't matter. Uh, much less draconian. Mm, way less feel bads. I accidentally do a, uh, drew a sideboard card game two in a PPTQ uh, about a month ago. And I felt the blood just drain out of my face because I knew, oh, I'm going to get a game loss. I'm about to win this game, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to get a game loss. So I call the judge. I tell him. And he's like, oh, uh, we're just going to exile it instead. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. I don't get a game loss for this. It's the correct penalty. Yeah, that's a new rule that I was actually, I, I talked to Gil quite a bit about because I was concerned about the ability if you have a one of in your main deck and then three additional copies, which is a very common thing in a format like Vintage a little bit in Legacy. You know, you might have like a Singleton Red Blast and then like three more to bring in. Oh, okay. And in particular, Ancient Grudge, you see that. So like, let's say you load up to four Ancient Grudges in a, a artifact-based matchup. Well, if you have four of them in your deck and you draw one of them, well, you incre you had a 4x chance. So right, if you actually read right. that policy, it will be a game loss if you have copies in your main deck and your side. Oh, I didn't know that nuance. That's interesting. Yeah, that, that was as soon as I heard that rule, I was livid. Uh, looks like we got cryptic command firing off. Snapcaster's still upside down. <laughs> Sam likes to see Tiago's beautiful face. Oh, not anymore. So six to nineteen. This is getting grim. Yeah, Sam, the only one with the with the creature land here, uh, along with the ability to back it up with Crucible of Worlds. 
replay it or replay the ghost quarter. Gotta favor him in the really long game. I'd say Steven has to do something quickly. Uh, but then again, I don't know Steve's last card in hand, so we'll see. Gideon's back. Gideon. Queller. I gotta admire Sam's patience. He still has the ability to snap Supreme Verdict. You gotta figure that's gonna come out soon. That Crucible is a, a huge threat, not necessarily to the life total, but recurring card advantage, and as you said, that Colonnade is basically invincible at that point, as long as he's got the life total to, to keep replaying it. Yep. Steve thinking about responses. Oh, says says go. Must have already made his land drop. Sulfur falls go. Steve sitting on an Electrolyze and a blue spell. Not sure what that last blue spell is. Maybe a logic knot. Carefully <laughs> scrying to here. And it looks like he may pick up another Cryptic Command. Now, important to note, after sideboarding, Sam definitely has less than the full play set of Supreme Verdicts, um, as well as only two Snapcaster Mages. So he has at least two more ways to flashback Supreme Verdict, uh, and maybe maybe no more Supreme Verdicts in the deck, so he has to be careful to make sure that the Snapcaster resolves. Doing two to the colonnade here. Ooh, that is not what you want to do with three mana. And <laughs> Goes quarter from the yard and says go. So Sam, well ahead on the life total. He's poised to move ahead to the semis. He just needs to hit with the creature land one more time. Can he do it? Will Spell Queller be forced to chump block? Let's see. If you're just joining us this morning... Zach Hall and Eric Dupuy here doing live coverage of TJ Titanium Plus. This is a $5,000 cash money modern tournament where the first and second place gets an invitation uh, to the finals at the end of the year. That's what these players are fighting for. And he gets in there. Mm -hmm. Ambush Viper. That may be enough, though. Yeah, he's yes. presenting two threats. That is unexpected. We've got a <laughs> lot of flash creatures <laughs> without a lot of value, but they're getting in there, getting their hands dirty. Yep, Crypt yep. The command back. And do a dispel. And snap for that other dispel. The counter war of the 2 3. Sam wins. Well done to conserve his mana there. Yeah, that was Keep really cool to see. Online, that yeah. was cool to see. I mean, most players right there would definitely not play the 2 1 at instant speed for no value. Um, that was impressive. End of turn, he slams it down. He didn't even think about it. 2-1, Ambush Viper. Uh, so congrats to Sam Richardson, our second semifinalist. Uh, he will join Steve Mullahu, or excuse me, I'm a liar. He'll join Brandon Smith in the semis. Uh, we're going to get the results of the other match for you as well. Um, so Eric, you said you don't play Modern much. When you do, what's your favorite deck to play? pretty much whatever I bought recently, but <laughs> okay. I've never really brewed modern. Uh, 
when the format first kind of started, uh, I did get a Blue Moon deck together. Oh, yeah. Uh, just because Blood Moon is a very powerful effect, and I expected the mana bases would be garbage. Mm, at the time. As they are. Um, and, and they really were. I think they have improved. Okay. I don't